Now, when I was in Aqsa, I met uh, a brother yes, a there who knew me from online and he said, look, I need to introduce you to a group, but you cannot take any pictures. You have to be on the low. Don't come with anybody, just yourself in Masjid Al-Aqsa. And I said, who are these? They said, he said, we are giving da'wah to some of the Yahud, but we're doing it not publicly. Because if you do it publicly, there's going to be a huge trouble. Oh. So I said, there are actually <laughs> converts here in this land. And he told me this brother, we estimate at least 1000 people have converted. We know around three, 400. And from those three, 400, we know that there are others. The majority of them are not saying anything to anybody. Hmm. They come and learn what they need to and then go back to their daily lives. A few of them, a few of them are public and a few of them have had to flee from their families and homes and come and find shelter in uh, Muslim lands. And they have heard about you. They want to meet you and, and, and they would hmm. want to sit with you. Of course, my pleasure, my honor to meet with them. So uh, after Salat al-Fajr, we prayed at the Masjid al-Aqsa. We went to one of the offices uh, inside the, the, the complex and we met like five or six of Israeli Jews who had converted to Islam, none of them had converted by one-on-one -on -one da'wah. None of them. Because that doesn't really happen. You know, in America, we have this, this freedom. You go in a booth and you give da'wah, you give pamphlets, you know, you, you knock on your neighbor's house, whatnot. There, as you know, there's a lot of, of religious segregation. There's no public preaching per se, even though theoretically it's legal, but you know what's going to happen if they actually do this, right? So hmm. each one of them, they had been guided to Islam on their own. Like just research and internet and, and, and buying pamphlets or, or doing this and that. And then they're contacting, you know, Muslim families until finally there's this, a small group of brothers that they're giving da'wah in Hebrew. In Hebrew. And so eventually they're all connected to, to this group. And you know, you hear these stories from Bilal ibn Rabah, from, and I'm not comparing astaghfirullah this to that. But you know, we've kind of sort of lost that level of iman in our Muslim societies. When's the last time you met somebody with that level of iman? We've kind of lost that persecution iman. But to meet these people in the very land that we know is the land of Mahshar and the land of Ard al-Mubarak, to meet the people. And they said to me, their families don't just view them as converts. Their families view them as traitors. Wow. They have left the society and they have nowhere to go. They're being taken care of by poor Muslims here and there. And they're giving up their society, their luxury, their life. And in this case, their children. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If that is not going to cause us to appreciate the blessings of Islam, then what will? Brothers and sisters, let us always remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted us this faith without us having to lift a finger. The majority of us were born into it. And even those who converted, yes, your struggles are more than ours, ours. But look at the struggles of the those brothers and sisters in that land. Remember in the Quran, we learn that when the people of Jannah enter Jannah, what will they say? What will they think of? They will say as the Quran says, وَقَالُوا أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي هَدَانَا لِهَذَا وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَدِيَ لَوْلَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ This is a Quranic dua from the people of Jannah. Even when they get to Jannah, what are they thanking Allah for? أَلْحَمْدُ who has guided us to this hidayah. And we would never have been guided to this hidayah unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had guided us to it. Alhamdulillah for the blessing of Islam. Alhamdulillah for the blessing of the Quran. Alhamdulillah for the blessing of being of the Ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu alayhi wa fi Quran al-Azim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihim al-ayati wa dhikr al-hakim aqoolu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfirullah al-Azim ali wa lakum wa lisa ili muslimin am kulli dhamin fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim. This story was sent to us by email. Brother Jonathan wants to stay anonymous and would like to keep his nationality private for the time being. So here we go. For the sake of Allah and peace on earth, I want to share my conversion story. And that is from Judaism to Islam. I am a 19 year old male. I was born into a secular Jewish family in Europe. My parents had no strong belief in God but they wanted me to know my Jewish identity and the story about the Jews. When I was young, my mother told me about our prophets, peace be upon them, and an important one, Prophet Moses or Musa, peace be upon him. 
my young heart longed for him. As I grew older, I saw that we weren't practicing Jews and that it was more about knowing our history. My mind wasn't thinking about God or religion yet. Hmm. Some years passed and I became interested in knowing the truth as I saw the truth wasn't clear for people at all. In the West, everyone just wants to live in the here and now, and everyone has different beliefs. My family was very open, with many secular Muslim friends, so I grew up having an open heart about people. I read a lot on the internet, getting all perspectives on matters, reading books to learn. I was determined to ignore my previous associations in order to reach some level of truth, and I never knew Islam would answer all my questions. This religion was clear. In Islam, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last prophet, and Islam didn't deny Jesus, or Isa, peace be upon him, as a prophet. He even had the name Al-Masih in the Holy Quran, meaning <laughs> the Messiah. There were many more prophets on earth, numbers reaching 124,000. My fear and love for Allah became strong as he led me to the ultimate truth, Islam. Infinite wow. thanks to Allah. But the biggest reason for my drastic move to choose Islam was because I saw that the state of the world and the technological development was paving the way for the Dajjal. La ilaha illallah. We Muslims need to stay strong together, being merciful to others and grateful to Allah. Our test isn't over. I pray for our future and that people may become fearful of Allah and grateful to Allah. We are all humans on earth and should respect each other. Our previous religions under Abraham, peace be upon him, should all be respected, as they also believe in the prophets. But it is Islam which will guide humanity to the ultimate truth. Peace and blessing. Relation among the main religions, particularly the Muslims, Christians and Jews, have been shaped not only by the beliefs and theologies of three religions, but more strongly, their shape by the historical circumstances in which they are found. Today, we'll be talking to you about a matter that involves the Jews and Muslims. We'll be discussing the increasing trend of Jews converting to Islam, mainly in Israel, and the problems that arise from the Muslims and Christians because of this. By the end of this video, you'll also have an idea about why we must be aware of what's going on in the world and how we can contribute towards developing a more peaceful world as individuals living in different corners of the globe. For Muslims, the Qur'an and Sunnah are key guides in dealing with people of other religions. Anybody who knows Islam is aware that the primary message of Islam is peace in this world and hereafter. However, as Islam continues to spread around the world, more and more Muslims are living in non-Muslim countries as minorities. This trend gives rise to newer intellectual and security challenges for Muslims. The up-to-date statistics of Jews to Muslim conversions in Israel are hard to come by at this moment. However, it is known that 35 Jews converted to Islam in the year 2003. The number doubled by the next three years and 70 Jews had converted to Islam in 2006. Between the years 2005 and 2007, more than 250 Jews in Israel had converted to Islam and it is not a surprise that many of them were women. Lahava, a movement in Israel that is not so cool with Muslims or any other religion for that matter, accused of causing incitement and is committed to helping women in particular, go back to the fold of Judaism after marrying Muslim Israel men and converting to Islam. Clearly we should take their facts with a pinch of salt. And as Gibstein, who co-founded this organization with her husband back in 2005, claims to receive five requests a day for help from these women. The women who did not convert but want to find a way out, either because they're stuck in the mundane cycle of living with Muslim families or who are crying for help of abusive relationships. Kupstein said, it's hard to give an accurate number, but we do know that the conversion from Judaism to Islam are on the rise. We believe it's because the women end up converting to Islam because they want to marry Muslim men. As a result, it becomes a problem for us Jews because these men are generals who take our women away from Judaism. Last year in 2019, one of Lahava's leaders, Bensi Gopstein, 
was charged with inciting hate. Gobstein referred to Christians as blood-sucking vampires and Whoa. demanded them to be expelled from Israel. Jews who convert to Islam or Christianity have repeatedly said that they did so after deepening their knowledge of the religion, particularly Islam. Many of them are disappointed in Judaism, a senior member of the Islamic court said. According to one of the converts, the interior ministries and the religious affairs ministry gave me a hard time while converting to Islam. They gave me the runaround, sending me back and forth from office to office. They also made me see a psychiatrist to make sure I wasn't brainwashed. They did everything they could so I would despair and return to Judaism. According to Gobstein's group, children that are born as a result of these marriages follow their father's religion. These kids will further end up marrying Muslim women or make more Jews convert to Islam eventually, dropping out of Judaism. More importantly, since they are raised by two conflicting societies, very often they find themselves unwanted by either of them. We do agree about there being exceptions in happy marriages when a woman from another religion converts to Islam before marrying. However, anyone can understand the nationalist and harmful exaggeration in Gopstein's five women a day number. If anything, the increasing trend of more Jews converting to Islam should give rise to a more democratic, more secular, more collaborative and peaceful environment for Israel. But unfortunately, the existence for movements like Lahava that give rise to hateful nationalism doesn't do good for any religious group in Israel, including the Judaism. May Allah make this world a peaceful place for people of all religions. Amen.